Let's see. Live now. I think we should be. Okay, looks like we have 11, oh, just saw 20, now 11 people watching. Okay. Hey, everybody. Okay. Cool. So I will get us started. Let's see. Just want to see if anybody left any questions or anything so far hello oh man that's rudiger good morning good morning from from california and then john i think in it's evening over where you are right now yeah it's uh 5 p.m here at the moment over in london got it cool well I'll get us started. So, hey, everybody, welcome to the live website teardown that we have for you here. So this is going to be a funnel analysis with John Ainsworth, who is the owner of Data Driven Marketing. So this is actually part two of our conversation. And for those who didn't join us the first time in our first conversation, John and I discussed the concept of adding courses or essentially digital products to your content sites to add another uh, another revenue stream outside of display advertising and affiliate marketing so the way that i the way that i kind of saw our conversation is that you're you're kind of opening up an, an almost like an e-commerce revenue stream by creating these digital products and i'll let john explain a little bit about him but i'll just uh, say that uh this concept is is in John's wheelhouse. This is what he does for clients and himself and his clients have seen some pretty incredible results that we discussed in the previous video. And I can, I can leave a link to that in the, the comments and the description if anybody's interested in seeing what we talked about. So we talked first about the concept of doing this, who, who is best suited to add products to their websites in part one. So now in this second conversation, we wanted to really, uh, kind of add uh, some action action ability or so or to illustrate how this actually works, uh, be, go beyond the theory. So provide you some examples of real websites. Uh, so we're going to be analyzing existing funnels, what they're doing right and what they could be doing better. So if anyone has any questions along the way, feel free to post them in the chat box and we'll address anything at the end or may maybe I'll jump in uh, if, if I see some questions are relevant to a, sp a specific section. So John, welcome back, man. It's great to chat with you again. Uh, it's been about six months. So uh, before we get started, could you just give the audience a little introduction about yourself, what you do, perhaps a better explanation than I was able to give about what we'll be getting into? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is John Ainsworth. I run Data Driven Marketing. And what we do is we help online course creators who've already got an audience and they've already got courses to between about two to five times their revenue um, by implementing better funnels, better email marketing and increasing their average order value. And the reason this works is that most people who are selling courses don't have, uh, they're good at course creation and they're good at content creation in order to drive traffic, but they're not good at the actual conversion part, the conversion rate optimization on the website, how do you use email marketing, how do you implement upsells, order bumps, things that increase the amount of people are spending. So the average results our clients are seeing is about 4.8 times increase in revenue. So that's a range, some people it's doubling, some we've got one client who's like 30 times their revenue. Um, but that's kind of, it's normally about, kind of average is about five times. And uh, what we've got today is there's a few different sites where people have already got courses and they've already got traffic and we're going to do a teardown of what's the stuff that they could do differently. How could they improve that in order to increase sales? And the great thing is this is not only dramatic improvements for these guys, 
dramatic improvements for you if you're running a course business. But if you've got an e-commerce business or a SaaS business or something, there's going to be some learnings in here for you as well. And if you haven't set up your courses yet, there's some great stuff that when you set, if you have an authority site or something like that, you set up courses like we talked about in the previous episode, and then um, you want to know what to do. This is going to show you the whole the whole roadmap, like what the steps are. Awesome. So I think we'll have enough time for, I think we said three, maybe four websites. Uh, so some of you have offered, to, uh, wanted to wanted us to show your websites so that we can use them here. So if anyone's watching, hopefully you are able to see your site uh, and get some valuable insight from it. So John, did you want to start by uh, sharing your screen and getting into the first website? Let's do it. Cool. All right. So this is POC English. And let me just check. That should be displaying now. Perfect. All right, cool. So this is a site in the language niche. And they have got about 200,000 website visitors a month, according to SimilarWeb. Uh, they've got a big YouTube channel, about 1.4 million YouTube subscribers. Now, according to our calculations, they could probably make about 140,000 a month from this. And so I'm going to show you this very briefly. We do these calculations. We've got this spreadsheet based on all of the data we do internally, where we figure out, like, we know what conversion rates are for different steps every point in the funnel. And we can take their numbers and plug it in, and then we can figure out how much they'd make. And so it spits out that over the course of, by the end of the year, they could be doing about 140,000 a month. And by the way, if anybody watching wants to get us to do that calculation for them, uh, you can just go to pimpyourfunnel.com and fill in your numbers and we'll do that calculation and we'll give you a whole load of useful information about um, what steps you should be implementing. Some of the same stuff I'm going to cover today, but personalized to you. So if we look at this site here, we see um, their focus. If you look at the YouTube channel as well, they're really focused on direct sales. So right here on the homepage, they're immediately just got links to the courses. That's their whole focus. Um, of the, the homepage is the way the YouTube channel is kind of structured as well as about direct sales, not about collecting leads of people for their email list. And this is a, a common mistake of the term, the money is in the list. That basically refers to the fact that if you can get an email list of a large number of people that you have con contact with regularly, you'll tend to make an awful lot more money than if you just have direct sales. So that's what they're missing out on here. So there's a few things we're going to cover. I'm going to talk about implementing a lead magnet to increase their email list, starting to do email promotions, improving their sales page, their checkout page, and implementing order bumps. And for each of them, what I'm going to do is go through on this first site in more detail to show what all the steps are and explain them. And then the other two sites, we're going to see there's common themes, like most people are making the same mistakes. So hopefully by the end of this, you're going to be like, okay, I see how this works. I see what the problems are. I get this. So starting off, lead magnet, they don't have a lead magnet. So just as a summary here, a lead magnet is when you give something useful away for free that encourages people to sign up onto your email list. So you have an email list, an email newsletter, emails that you send out regularly, and you want someone to get on the list and you give them something valuable, a checklist, a template, a swipe file, a quiz, something uh, in order to encourage them to join onto your list. That's a lead magnet. And they, don't, they just don't have that here at all. Um, and in fact, if we look at their homepage, their blog posts, everywhere on the site, there isn't anything really there. They've even got this placement test, which would be perfect because people go through and they answer all these questions about what their current levels are. Uh, you know, they answer a bunch of questions, these 30 questions, and you could ask for their email address and they don't do that here either. So they've got no way of really getting people onto their email list apart from if somebody buys from them. Um, they also have free trials on every page. Let's have a look here. Oops. If we click here on free trial, this would be another great way to get somebody onto their email list and they, uh, they don't ask for the email for this either. Now, if they were collecting email addresses through that, we reckon they could get about 4,000 email signups per month. And you'll see that calculation in the spreadsheet here. Um, leads. That's from the website, and then about another 15,000 from their YouTube channel. So about 20,000 new leads a month is our, is our estimate, which means they'd build up a really, really strong email list, and then they could be emailing those people regularly and getting people signing up um, and then sending out promotions to those people. 
So the next step is then their sales page. So we're gonna have a quick look at that. And if we look at the sales page, there's a lot of stuff that could be improved here. And we do um, a lot of work. We have done for you clients where we do all of the work for them. And we have a group coaching program where we help people to be able to implement the stuff themselves. And with both of them, we get the opportunity to run a lot of tests and see what is it that works. And uh, we can A-B test things and we can find out, okay, we changed this style, this format, what approach was it that was most effective? And so I can tell you with a, a really, like we call data-driven marketing for a reason, we're really obsessed with this kind of stuff. And so I can tell you with a really high degree of certainty what things, if they changed it, would make them more money. This isn't just my opinion, this is like absolute facts based on a lot of tests that we've run. So the first thing is above the fold. So we're looking at this on the desktop at the moment, and we can see that there is an enormous amount of stuff going on here that's kind of confusing above the fold, the fold being like the bottom of the bottom of the screen before you start to scroll. So what could we get rid of? First of all, this whole navigation bar isn't needed on sales pages. You can just get rid of that because you want to keep people focused and get them um, on that page. These breadcrumbs, that can also go. You need that for most of the rest of the site, not for the sales pages. All this information here at the top is in the wrong place on the site. This is really distracting because the first thing we want people to do is see the headline. And the headline is that the most important thing for getting someone to be convinced they're on the right site, on the right page, that this is something that's relevant to them. More people will read the headline than anything else on the whole page. So let's start to break down if all of these things are wrong, what is it that we actually do want to have in place? we want to have a really strong and compelling headline. So at the moment, this is basically just a description of what this course is. It says online English course for beginners. And it should be promising a result. It should be something compelling that's going to get people to think, yes, I want that outcome. So I'm going to bring up an example from a client of ours, Lucy, and this is her sales page. You'll see there's no navigation bar at the top. The headline's nice and big at the very top. Speak confident, fluent British English. So this kind of headline tends to work really well. It's promising what's the result that person's going to get. The next thing that these guys don't have is they haven't got a sub headline. And that's something that goes underneath the headline and is for people uh, to understand a little bit more. Like, okay, I read the headline, I'm interested enough. Now let me read the next line and just think, okay, is this definitely for me? Is this definitely something I'm interested in? So you'll see with Lucy, she's continued on with that promising result. Join my new program and master intermediate English in three months. So it's a more um, clear, it's a slightly more detailed promise in that subheadline. So these guys are just missing that completely. The next thing that they do have in place is a call out to their audience. That's this section here. That's where they're saying to people, is this for you? Is this appropriate? Is this something that you can recognize as being about you? Um, and if not, then you know you're in the wrong place, you should leave the page. If you're in the right place, you're like, great, this, this course, this thing that you're selling is appropriate to me. And so we've got things here like, are oh, you a beginner who wants to start learning English from zero? This course is for you. So you want, it doesn't have to be long, but you want something like that at the top of the site. Um, so the, the header first, and the, so going back to, I guess, would a good header for this be something like, uh, be able to speak with a have casual conversation with a native speaker in two months or something like that. Something like that. Whatever you think is realistic promise, whatever is a realistic outcome for the beginner one. So if we look at this is B1, which is a little bit more advanced. This is the beginner one they've got here. So it's not, we're not going to be able to say master intermediate English or speak confident fluent British English because that's too far along. Sure. What from what of the, their, customers managed to achieve and what kind of level have they got to with this one. Yeah. And then okay. bring that up as the headline. Got it. And then that's the second part that you're talking about. That's still at the top, but that comes right after the, yeah. the header. Okay. Yeah. And it kind of just lets people know if they're in the right place. Like, is this, am I, am I on the right site? Am I in the right place? Is this appropriate? Um, next thing you want is to have above the fold a uh, call to action. And so what is it someone's supposed to do? And you'll see here we've got three call to actions, two above the fold, free trial, register, and at the bottom, free sample lesson. And that's kind of confusing to people. People aren't sure then well, which one am I supposed to click? What's supposed to happen? What should I do? So you only want to have one thing really. And they've, they've kind of tried a few different angles here instead. 
So we want to cut that down to one. And that register is kind of the most appropriate one because that's actually about them buying something. Um, like you might use these free trials, whatever, somewhere else in the process, but not on the sales page. Uh, but register is a, it's, it's not great in terms of the wording for that button. We want to have something a bit more like, yes, I want to start learning now, which sounds kind of long, but something like that today, join the program today, you see here. So it's the, it's, it's I in want the that outcome. Person. Yeah. It's like, what, it. if I'm thinking, if I'm clicking it, it's like me saying, yes, I'm doing that thing. Yep. Got it. Next bit that we're missing is problem agitation solution. This is a classic, classic copywriting framework that you should always, always have on any sales page. And this is about saying to people, I understand your problem. I understand what current situation you've got, what the issue is. You agitate it by talking about what emotions might they be feeling from that. Okay, I've got that problem and I'm feeling all of this, like I'm frustrated, I'm annoyed, I'm embarrassed, whatever it is that people are feeling, you empathize with that and you show that you understand it. And then you tell them, but don't worry, I've got the solution. So the people from an emotional point of view, this bit is like factually, are they the right kind of person who is who should be here? The problem agitation solution is emotionally you're showing like, yeah, I understand your problem. I understand your emotions and I've got you, you know, you, I've got you covered here. So that's just missing completely here. Um, and that should be the next section after the um, call out to the audience. Got it. Next one they're missing here is meet the instructor. And what really bugs me with this page about that is there's a section here that says instructor, but if you click it, all it says is teacher Maddie. And you're like, okay, well, that doesn't tell me a lot. If I click teacher Maddie, watch what happens. This user does not public their profile. I'm like, okay, this is bad for two reasons. One, it shouldn't be linked if it doesn't actually give them any information. And two, that is not an English sentence. You are selling English courses. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, guys, you've got to change that. You really should have something about Teacher Maddie here, you know. So we definitely want to change that. Um, next section that they have not got is benefits. Now, what's really interesting is if you read down here, it says main benefits. But what we've got is features. And people do this all the time. They talk about stuff that from their point of view is a benefit, but from the client's point of view is not necessarily. So this is like, you get a certificate, you get teacher support, you get free updates. That's great features. What is the benefit you get from that? The benefit is so, um, okay, so this bit here is kind of the benefit. You can study whenever you want and you can get support, but like drill into it, like talk about, okay, so what? So the idea with benefits versus features is you take the feature and you think, so what? Like, what does that mean to the person? How does that improve their life? What are they going to have in terms of like, we haven't covered anything here about like, how is that actually going to affect someone's life in the future? How are they going to be better off as a result of having gone through these things? This is talking about how they're going to be able to do the studying. But what about after they've done the studying? Okay, now you're going to be able to talk to your other half's um, family. Now you're going to be able to talk at this level at work. Now you're going to be able to order food at a restaurant, whatever it is. Um, that's just not mentioned here at all. And that's kind of the real benefits that people actually want to get down to as well. You need the features, but you've also got to have the benefits. Got it. Social proof of testimonials is quite good here. They've got these uh, testimonials. They've got them on this little scrolling thing here and they've got like seven or something. So it's good they've got them in there. I think it'd be better if they were actually separated out instead of having to scroll through them, but that's it's fine. They've got something good there. And that's really important. Because it lets people know, oh, other people like me have gone through this. They did the thing. They got the benefit, which is great. Um, next bit you need to have on the sales page is the offer in, in, in detail. And they've got some stuff about this. They've got summary here. They've got more details about the, about the offer here. And then if you go to the curriculum section, they've got it broken down into what the different stages are. It's not a lot of detail here. And if you click on any of them, then it just takes you to this section saying that's protected. So you don't get to see a huge amount of information about it. And some people want all the details about, okay, how is this going to work? What is it going to cover? Is it going to cover exactly what I do for, for what I'm after? And so that's kind of basically missing there. The next bit that they don't have is bonuses. They haven't got any bonuses at all. And the idea with the bonus is something extra that somebody gets that's going to help them to learn faster, more easily, that's going to help them to get a better result, or it's going to cover a slightly different topic that's just an extra thing that they get. 
and people love getting something extra for free that makes them feel really good it's got to be something that they don't need for the core course but maybe it's going to be so, like learn the top 100 vocab words that weren't you know that's like a set of, um, separate module that's, that's on top of it or learn restaurant english whatever that isn't covered in the absolute beginners course but it's just something extra that you get as a bonus guarantee guarantees are really important people need to know that they if they buy this and it's not right for them they can get their money back now they have a guarantee but here we go it's not spelled out very clearly here it's it's not they haven't made a big enough deal of it visually so that could be improved but they have got it and really i'd love to see it being a 30 or a 60 day money back guarantee um the reason people sometimes don't do that is because they're worried like okay what if somebody takes the whole thing and refunds it's like yeah someone's got to take the risk either it's you or it's the customer and as the business owner it should be you and if you take the risk then more people will buy you'll do better overall customers are happier um Seven days is quite a short time for someone to go through and, and figure out if this is right for them. So that could definitely be improved. Frequently asked questions is the next section. And by the way, this is like what I'm going through here is basically the 15 crucial elements of a sales page. Any sales page can be improved pretty much by just adding the elements you don't currently have. That's like step number one is just going through and add those steps in. Um, and if anybody wants that, those like a, a document with the 15 crucial elements just email me john j-o-h-n at datadrivenmarketing.co and i'll uh, I'll email over to you yeah i was thinking that'd be that'd be nice to send to the audience somehow so just have them have them email you yeah 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 yeah. that's no problem i'll get somebody in my team to to reply to everybody and make sure they get that i'm really bad with email but i you will get it if you email me i will make sure you get it um so frequently asked questions they've got that here um, the summary is always good to have at the bottom, like a summary. There's not enough information on this page to really summarize. But if you had everything, then have a summary at the bottom so everyone like, can go, okay, right, I get this bonus, this guarantee, whatever, these features, but just in, in short. And the reason, just to kind of summarize something about sales pages that people always get wrong, everybody, a lot of people think, oh, nobody reads those long form sales pages. The point of having a really long sales page is not because everybody's going to read every part of it. The point is you're talking to thousands potentially of different people and they all want to know slightly different bits of information. So some of them really care about the testimonials and want to see what everybody else did. Some of them really care about the features and exactly what's included in the course and what's covered in each module. Some of them really care about the guarantee or whatever. And you need to talk to all of them. So therefore you include everything and you have nice clear subheadlines throughout the uh, page and so everyone can just scroll to the bit that's most interesting to them and read whatever it's written there and then some people want the summary so you put a summary of it as well and then last thing that's missing is scarcity and urgency there's no reason for someone to take action now instead of next week and the way we often do that is often with um countdown timers but that's done with email promotion so that that's kind of excusable that it's not here but there's nothing really that's covering that oh in this section at the bottom as well we probably wouldn't want to have this footer on a sales page either. So that's a lot of stuff that I've covered there about the sales page, but it's all like, that's the really crucial stuff. If you add all those bits in and they're not rocket science, like if you go through this page here, you can go to this called it's at b1course.com and you scroll through here, you're gonna see all of those sections. Um, This is the pain agitation solution section. Uh, This is introduce the instructor section, you know, so it's like this is the summary of the overall course. It's like all the stuff that I've just gone through. It's all it's all kind of laid out here. So you could kind of look at this as an example. So sorry, all 15 of these, would you say are somebody should absolutely have all 15 of these? Mm -hmm. Or I I know you mentioned that uh, like with the the created the scarcity component, for example, that there are should every yeah so with the scarcity and urgency there's two parts to it one is you don't have the countdown timer on pages normally that's only when you're doing a promotion okay the part that you do include is you give people you, you talk to people about why they should take action now um as in you know throw it again at your next family you know meal or whatever here's your chance to take action and get started right now so you should always have something like that i see but Majority of the scarcity and urgency is normally done with the countdown timer. So you'll see there isn't probably one on here. But if Lucy was running a promotion, like she just launched this course six months ago or something like that. Um, I'm just scrolling to see if there's any timer. No, there's not. Um, 
But uh, when she does a promotion, then there will be a version of this page with the countdown timer on it again. That's that's the, the bulk of it. All the other bits that I mentioned, yes, everybody should have that every time. Everybody should always have testimonials, guarantee, frequently asked questions, meet the instructor, all of that stuff. Got it. So some of my key takeaways from this site is first focusing on the benefits as opposed okay. to the features and making sure that the benefits are, are very prominently up at the, the first thing that the audience sees both in terms of the headline and then in terms of the, the description about the more of the outcome being empathetic to what the, the person is, the emotions of the person, if they're feeling embarrassed or frustrated uh, and, and then being able to talk about the outcome. So it seems like you, what you were saying is the top of the, the, yeah, the, the top of the page is focused primarily on the benefits, less about the features, and then eventually gets into the features testimonials uh in added bonus mm -hmm. and yep. a time incentive for them to make action now yeah yeah got it cool sweet okay next step then is the order page and this one's an interesting one so if we click here and go to the order page then you'll see the first thing we're going to do is create an account there's no good reason for this there is no good reason why we should have to create an account. You want to make checking out for people as easy as possible. They've decided to buy and they've clicked through and then we're putting something in their way. Now, here's the numbers on checkout pages. On most checkout pages that I see, about 90% of people drop out at the checkout stage. So only 10% of people who've clicked, who wanted to buy, actually make it all the way through. With our clients, we've got conversion rates on checkout pages of about 50%. So even on ones where we've done every single test imaginable and got everything working, you're still only getting 50% of people buying. But that's five times more than, than the 10% you normally see. I would say a good number for most people to look for is about 20%. Most people can get to 20% without like doing absolutely everything. And I'm going to show you the 80-20 of it today, like what's the five crucial elements. So we want to make it easy so you don't want people to have to register. I'm going to log in here, which I set this up in advance. Um, oops, let's see if I can get in. Log in. There we go. Okay, now what happens if you log in is it then removes you from the, <laughs> the page that you were on. Um, ah. Really frustrating, I know. So then you have to go all the way back through. Okay, so now I'm here, right? So then you've got this stage here, choose whether you're gonna pay with PayPal or crypto pay or, or with credit card. Let's say we choose credit card. Again, that's a little too confusing, but that takes you then through to this page, which is more where you'd wanna to get to much sooner. Um, I don't know how many people are paying them with crypto pay, but I would suggest PayPal and credit cards probably enough. So this is then the checkout page and this is powered by Stripe. That's the system they're using here. And what we've got missing is a number of really crucial elements. So we're missing any kind of a picture of the instructor and the product. People like to know that they're definitely buying the thing they're meant to be buying and they want to have a nice picture of whoever it is who they're buying it from, if that's important, or of the product itself. So I'm going to show you here. Um, let's pay and choose this option. Here we go. So this is from Lucy. And so it's got a picture of Lucy saying B1 program. So that's like kind of what we need to have here. Not, nothing huge, but just it's important to have that. The next thing that we're missing is a reminder of the key features and benefits. So I'll show you what that looks like. If we scroll down here, we should see that. Here we go. Reminder of the features and benefits. Just a very quick bullet point of what's going to be included in it. Uh, we're missing the guarantee on here. There's no mention of the guarantee at all. And this is the point when people are most nervous. They're about to put their credit card details in. They're about to spend the money. They can't get it back unless they, you know, or they're not 100% sure they'll be able to. Um, so reassure them, give them, tell them they get that guarantee. Uh, next thing you want is testimonials on this page. You've already seen testimonials on the previous page, but put them again. Remind them, yes, other people have bought this and they were delighted. It got five-star reviews. So you'll see if I scroll up here, a couple of testimonials from people here. And uh, trust badges we do have just showing the Visa and American Express and MasterCard kind of badges there. So all of that will increase conversion rates considerably. If someone just put those bits on and didn't like nail it, didn't do it perfectly, I would guess they'd probably double their conversion rate on that page and then would double their overall sales just from making these changes. 
Um, so as a summary again, that was a picture of the instructor in the course, um, the testimonials, summary of what's included, guarantee, all of those bits. South Tech Creations asks, do you recommend embedding the cart or having them go to another page to get to the checkout cart or page? Yeah, get to another page for it. Yeah, it does work better. It's not like a massive difference, but I think I, my delivery team did test on this recently. I think the improvement was something like 20% better if you go to a separate page for the checkout. Do you also find that's more useful for, for tracking? Yeah, just... yeah, it's easier then to know where is it that people are dropping out. So we do, I'm gonna see if I can find it. Um, I wanna try and pull this off. If I can't find it quickly, then I'll uh, I'll skip it and maybe we'll come back to it later. But um, this is KPI to audit template, KPI tracking template. This is probably the right one. So these are like not real numbers. This is just putting this as an example. What we do for every, promotion we do with the client da, 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 is we'll track like every step throughout the funnel. So we'll see how many people got to the checkout. So how many people saw the trip or saw the sales page, how many saw the checkout, what was the conversion rate? And so we can look here and go, right, something's gone wrong here with the checkout page. So therefore we know we need to fix that. Okay, now we've fixed it. It's up about the right kind of conversion percentage. And when you have this, it makes it much easier to improve because if you know the the, the um, benchmarks for each stage and you know what the conversion rate is at every single stage how many people clicked on your emails how many people opened them clicked on them how many got to the sales page how many got to the checkout page how many bought you know which step is the one you need to work on so yes 100 percent, that's better for um for tracking nice so the next thing these guys are missing on here is not going to increase conversions but it's going to would increase the amount of money they make per transaction and that is something called an order bump. And an order bump is where you have an additional offer that somebody can get on the checkout page. All they have to do is click a, a tick a tick box and it adds this additional offer to their, to their cart. And between about 30 and 50% of people will buy that if you have the right offer at the right price. All you need is like two or three sentences promoting that. So I'll show you the one on here with Lucy. Uh, she has got the PDF vault. And so you get it's a huge discount, $97 down to 39. Save 60% have access to all my lesson PDFs. So she's got this great offer they can also get if they buy it now. If I click this, you'll see over here, it's gonna add it onto the um, amount that's being charged. Just added that on there. Now for these guys at POC English, they didn't have one. So I invented a, well, my team did this actually, I shouldn't claim credit for it. We invented what it could be for them and added the, like a mock-up here. So you'll see here it says, in fact, let me zoom in a little bit and that way people can maybe read this. We added this 30 day vocabulary challenge. They tend to work really well with language courses. We put a big discount on it and then put a few sentences explaining what's included in it. And just having that will lead to about 30 to 50% of people buying that additional offer, which increases revenue by about 15 to 20%. 10, 15, 20, it depends on the exact price points, but that kind of range um, is massive. It's like this, this is, this is like the 80, this is, looks so ridiculously simple that it's hard for people to even believe that that could be enough that that will work. But honestly, that on its own, this one change of adding order bumps to all of your offers increases revenue by 10, 15, 20% for your whole business. If you do that on every single sales page, same thing works for e-commerce businesses. I had a friend come up to me at a conference uh, a couple of years ago, running an e-commerce business. And he's like, oh, I implemented order bumps. And so now I make $5,000 extra per month, every month. For wow. It's just like, cool. <laughs> it's like, buy me beers. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. We have a question. Is a bump offer or a one-time offer better than an upsell? Or would you do both? I'd do both. Yeah. So I'm not, I wasn't planning on showing upsells here, but uh, because it's a little bit harder because I would have to go through and buy the product to actually show it on the screen, but I'll explain what it is. So this order bump is on the checkout page and people get confused with this. So I'm going to try and make this as clear as possible. The order bump is on the checkout page. It's this tick box where people, if they tick it, it adds it to their cart when they add their credit card details. So if, if you look at Lucy's one here, if I tick this, 
it goes from $399 here, I tick this, it now goes to this $39 is added, so it's now $438. So that is an order bump. An upsell is the next page, someone adds their credit card details, they click buy now, they bought, that's gone through, the next page is the upsell page. And that's where you offer something that's about the same price as what they've just bought. So it could be another course for $400 or $99 or $500 or something in that kind of range. Not, not cheap like this one at $39. And you have a whole sales page and the call to action button on that page is, yes, add this to my order. And they don't, if they click that, it adds it to their order and they don't have to enter their credit card details again. That's really, really important. And that is an upsell. If you have both, each of them adds 10 to 20% to your revenue. So your total revenue goes up by like 30, 40%. Wow. From having the two of them. I know it's so good. It's, and it's, if you put really good products in there that are appropriate, that are the right things for people to buy and you have good discounts on them, then it's a great deal for customers. It's a total win-win. You know, when, as you were talking about this, adding all of the reassurances before the, the, before they make their payment, that makes complete sense. Another thing that I've heard was after they complete their payment, having a note saying, uh, you made the right decision, yes. pretty much a, a post purchase reassurance saying, congratulations, you made the right decision. You're on your way to achieving this outcome. Now that makes more sense i mean i i personally appreciate seeing that because i do feel a little, a little bit tense like oh did i make the right decision yeah. but now it makes more sense in the context of if you want to then s uh, sell an upsell to kind of validate their first decision to make that purchase say you've you've made the right decision uh this isn't a blank screen we're not going to just take your money and, and like the, we're, we're here with you uh yeah. now if you want to to trust in us a little bit more you can pay pretty much double the amount or for another uh, the same price that you just paid already so now that it makes sense why that post sale reassurance is as important if you want to consider upsells yeah and you do that typically on, a, on that on that upsell page two ways you have something written across the top of the page saying your order has gone through that's going to be with you shortly we're going to email you the details in the next 10 minutes um, and then you also have the video which is making the offer for the for the next product and at the beginning of that you say to people this was a great choice. You should feel really good about this. We have helped a lot of people just like you to get the results that you're after. And it's going to be fantastic. And we're going to get you those results. And it's going to be great. We're going to work with you together on this. You know, you're going to have this amazing course. If you go through it, you're going to achieve these results. Now, if you want to go even further, you want to, whatever the upsell might be, you also buy the intermediate and the advanced courses then get them all now and you're going to get a special discount and then you're going to be able to keep going with those courses after you finish this one and then continue on and reach the really advanced level or whatever else it is that you're selling. You know, you're selling a music course and you say, right, well, the upsell is by the annual membership and we're going to, you're going to have extra support all the time or whatever it is that they get as the additional thing. So yes, reassurance first. You don't want people to think you're just, just desperate for their money. It's like, no, you want to sell them something good that's going to help them. Got it. Another question here, do you recommend down sells? Down sells is too complicated for nearly everybody. Uh, they work. So the concept of a down sell is you have the initial product. Let's say your initial product is $99. You have an upsell to the next thing they might get, which is maybe another $99. They don't buy the upsell. They click no thank you very much on that page. On the down sell, you then offer them a, maybe a payment plan on that same thing. Okay, well, you didn't want to buy it for 99, but maybe you want to make three payments of uh, 34 or $39 or something like that. Or you offer them the discount of the smaller version of it. Instead of buying that whole next course, why don't you buy just this, you know, it's just this part of it or something. So as an example, in the digital marketing space, I went through, I bought a course about webinars and they had as the upsell was but get five webinar presentation templates that you can just put your users, your slides, your slide template. They're really beautifully designed. They're going to work really well. They fit perfectly. They've got all the content in. You said no to that. You got offered two. So what if you, why not just get two of them for a smaller price? So that's the, the way the downsell works. They do work. They are effective, but they're, they're too advanced for nearly everybody. Um, the stuff I encourage everybody to do is do all the fundamentals, do the basics before you start getting too clever. And I think that for nearly everybody down sells is, is too advanced. Got it. 
All right. So that is everything about um, POC English in terms of what stuff they could have in place. So they should implement the lead magnet, build up their email list. They'll then be able to do email promotions. We're not going to cover that today because that's, I think, just too big of a topic and we can't do it as a website teardown because that's the emails is off the website. Yep. Um, improve their sales page, improve the checkout page, add an order bump. Uh, and then start doing the email promotions. And if they have everything in place, if they had our whole um, strategic funnel optimization system in place, I reckon they could be making $148,000 per month with their traffic size that they've currently got. Yeah, can you remind me of that? So that was, you calculated $140,000 per month based on the fact that they bring in 200,000 monthly users? Yeah, so 200,000 website visitors. Uh-huh. And then we've also added in their YouTube channel, which is here, monthly views. And our, so I've got a lot of internal data. Um, I'll just summarize it. I, I don't think I can share it on screen because it shows some clients' internal data. But what we found is most people can get a 3% opt-in rate on their website from visitors to signing up for the email list. And they can get about a 1% opt-in rate from their YouTube channel. So of the monthly views they get on YouTube, they get about 1% of them to opt-in. And so as a total, when you do all the sums across all of their channels, that means that they could get about 20,000 new email leads a month. I made a random guess that they're starting with 180,000 people on their email list. So let's say it's not that. Let's say it's 40,000. That obviously would change the total sum for the year. And that now gives us for per month, they would reach 116,000. So then everything else is based on these different kinds of funnels. We've got a tripwire funnel. We've got two email promotions. And these are the, the average numbers that we see as conversion rates for each one of those different steps from like, we've looked at dozens of different clients and gone, what do we on average see as the result that people get? When you add it all up together, that gives you this number here. I won't go through all the calculations because it'll take forever. This took us like years to build this, (laughs) you know, to collect enough data for it. Now, there might be people who are watching this that that don't yet have a content site bringing in 200,000 users. When when do you think is the appropriate time for somebody to start thinking about implementing these things that you're talking about? Right. So you first of all need to have two things. You need to have a decent sized uh, traffic and you need to have... um, courses that people like and want to buy. Once you have that, then you should start implementing most of these things. Now, the exact order is, if you've got a content site, maybe you're running ads on it at the moment, you've got affiliate links, and you're thinking about going to start a a course business, you don't have the courses yet. First thing is set up the, the lead magnets, start collecting email addresses, and that's gonna do two things. One, you can point people from there straight to affiliate deals, and so you can make money from that email list straight away. And two, you can start to build a relationship with that audience so that when you are ready to start selling courses, then you can you, you have a nice warm audience so you can sell stuff to. So then you survey the audience and you ask them what kind of topics would you like to learn about? And you get some ideas from people of what courses you should be making. And then you can do a pre-sell of that course and see did people buy it? You know, you said to people, right, I'm going to give you a massive discount of 70% off if you buy before we've even made it. We're going to have it ready in three months if enough people want to get it. Buy now, and then if we don't go ahead, you're going to get your, a refund. And if you do go ahead, you'll get the, you know, the best discount you'll ever get in your life. And then if loads of people buy that and are interested, you go ahead and you actually make the course and allow yourself enough time to do that. I'd say at least three months for putting together a, a, a really good, strong course. Um, you could do a... a beta version as version one in less time, but I'd say normally that's a good time frame. Got it. So that's the kind of steps to go through. I'd got say if you've got courses and they're selling them when you've got an email list of like 5,000 people, then it's worth starting to implement the rest of the, the rest of the stuff we've got around email promotions, what have you. Uh, the order bumps, probably if you've got courses already, set that up straight away. It's like a, it's not a lot of work. It's not a huge amount of work. Got it. So that's for somebody who hasn't yet created their first course and wants to test product market fit for their specific yeah. content site uh, by pre-selling courses or creating something that doesn't that's low cost in both financially and, and in terms of time. So just testing something out, testing the market out first. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Great. Well, this is all very helpful information. I I'm to be 
wary of time. I, I know we have uh, just a little bit, a little bit longer. We could, I'm sure, talk about this site uh, for the re remainder of the time. But maybe, do we yeah. have enough time to get into it? I'm same. going to bash through the next couple because you're going to see we the same things again are going to come up really consistently. So okay. I'm going to bring up the next couple. And I think it's helpful to see that repeatedly, to see it about different sites and how common this is. Um, but I'm not going to go through all the details so much. So this is Joe Dispenza. He's in the spirituality niche. He's got about a million website visitors a month, according to similar web and uh, three quarters of a million YouTube subscribers, a couple of million Instagram followers. So big audience size. And we think, according to the estimate for him, that he can probably get to about 400,000 a month from course sales alone is the sums that we, we calculated there, not including, I know he also does live stuff as well. But he's still making, uh, even though he's got his giant audience size, he's still making a lot of the same mistakes and losing out on a lot of money. So he doesn't have a lead magnet. He's only got a newsletter. If we scroll down to the footer here, um, I already signed up earlier. This is the uh, newsletter sign up. Newsletter signups will typically see about a 0.25% opt in rate across the whole site. And if you've got a good opt in, like I was showing before, then you're going to be looking at about 3% opt in rate. So, what do we need to do? We need to have a lead magnet. And so, that's like I said, something useful and free people get if they sign up to the newsletter. And then we need to have it in a lot of places. So we want to have that on the homepage as like the main thing that people can uh, we focus on before focusing on making sales, focus on getting someone to sign up to the email list because then they're more likely to buy later. It should be in the posts, in his like blog posts. I'm going to pull up some examples of those. And you'll see at the moment there is nothing within these apart from that newsletter at the bottom. So we actually should have like an, either a sidebar or like within the blog post or ideally both of a way that someone can sign up. And I'll show you an example of someone who's got these. This is an old client of ours. If you're in the blog post, you'll scroll down and you'll see there's a way to sign up for their lead magnet. They're kind of currently running this challenge. It's a way to sign up right, right within the post itself. And then there'll be a pop-up as well. So you basically have that lead magnet kind of everywhere. And also you wanna have that on YouTube. You wanna link in YouTube from a, a pinned comment um, from one of the posts. So if I go to Lucy, um, Lucy's got a YouTube channel as well. There we go. And I expect if I go- My name is Gabby. Oops, this is gonna play some ads, is it? Uh, here we go. You'll see here in the, um, in the description and then in the pinned comment, there is a link to her um, free test and that's gonna ask people to sign up to her email list as well. So they should have lead magnets in all of those different places. If we look at Joe's sales page, we're gonna see a lot of the same mistakes. And this one's um, definitely could do with some work. We wanna get rid of everything above the, um, at the top here in the navigation. Um, this structure here, we really wanna have a, we've done a lot of testing around the structure of these sections here. And we should have um, this text over here on the left. And then a video ideally would be much better than this on the right hand side. We don't want all of this empty space here. We want a headline that is compelling, like we talked about before. And this one, again, as most people do, just has a description of the course, it just has the name of the course pretty much. Now, a, a good headline for this could be discover a new way to heal, deepen your sense of self and self-love and be yourself. And a compelling headline here could be dive deep into yourself to learn how to feel good in your skin. And that's based on what we've read from in the text here. So we wanna have a strong headline, strong subheadline. So exactly the same issue. Um, ideally you wanna have a, a nice clear call to action above the fold and that's not showing here. We want this add to cart, which isn't a great text here, but like, you know, that could say, Um, I'm trying to think what else might be that like, a, yes, let's get, get started now. Yes. I want this course, something like this, um, as the text and that could be higher up. Start healing now or something like that. Or if it's a healing, I'm not sure what this course yeah. is. Yeah. 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 Yes. I want to start healing now. Something along those kind of lines. Yeah. Um, we've got the problem agitation section, problem, problem agitation solution section is just missing. We just don't have that on this page. 
meet the instructor, missing. There's nothing about that. A lot of people will know who Dr. Joe is before they get to this page, but a lot of people might not know enough about it as well. So let's answer those questions. Benefits, it's just missing. There's no benefits section on this page at all, really explaining what, what you'll get out of this, just what's included in the course. Social proof, testimonials, it's missing. There's nothing, I kind of, I keep scrolling up and down because I'm like, surely they're there somewhere, but it's like, no, there's no, um, no testimonials on that page at all. Uh, the offer in detail, they've got this here, which is quite good. That's that's not bad at all. Bonuses they don't have, a guarantee. This course is not refundable. All online course purchases are non-refundable, which is a terrible business decision and is terrible for customers. Because some people, they might get it and find out it's really not right for them and they should be able to get a refund. So that's... that's um, not great. And from a business point of view, it's a terrible idea as well. Frequently think, asked questions. Sorry. I think, the wor I think the worry is when you're selling a digital product that you're, that the customer keeps the product. Uh, but what you mentioned earlier is either the customer is taking the risk in purchasing a digital product or you as the business owner is taking the risk. Yeah. So pretty much any, your, your recommendation is any digital product should have a, a refund policy associated with it. Yeah, it increases it increases purchase rate. It's more than going to make up for anybody who do, does decide to rip you off somehow. And you know what? It's fine. Just let it go. Like, focus more on the people who are good people who aren't trying to rip you off, but are just they're not sure if this is right for them and they should spend their hard-earned money on it or not. Yep. So that's the bulk of what's wrong with this page and what could be changed. And that would increase conversion rates considerably. That would really bring it up. Uh, next section is if we go to add this to cart, it's got this set up in more of an e-commerce kind of way. Like you add it to cart and then you still have to click to check out, which is, it works for e-commerce. It doesn't really work the same way for online courses. People aren't tending to buy multiple courses in one go from one site. You tend to do just one at a time. This checkout page is then hugely unnecessarily complicated. Why do you need my address? There's no reason. You just don't. You just don't need my address at all. You're not going to do anything with it. So that could be removed. Um, if we continue to payment, is it going to let us go through to the next page? No. It's going to insist that we put something in here. then we see we don't have any of those sections that I talked about before. They've got an image here of the product. It'd be better, I think, if they had a picture of uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza here as well. Um, they're missing a reminder of key features and benefits, testimonials, guarantee, and trust badges. And I think that's it, but all the same things. And they don't have an order bump, same as all the previous things. So. Basically, we've got a very common trend here of people are missing the same things. And like we know that these things increase conversion. We know it makes customers happier. Now, Nick, have we got, like that's that's kind of the end of that one. Yeah. Um, I've got another one to go through if there's time to do it. Yeah, I think it, it, if we can get through that one, that would be great. Cool, great. Let me bring that up then. So this is Alison's notebook. And, oops, where's that gone? I don't know what happened there. Here we go. So this is uh, in the lifestyle niche. So getting about 70,000 website visitors a month, according to similar web. Um, Alison can tell us if that's not right. And we think that Alison could get to about 15 and a half thousand a month with just course sales. So we put the numbers in here and that's being out about 15 and a half thousand. Um, and that depends on current size of the email list at the moment. Multiple lead magnets. Alison is killing it with this. This is much better than these other sites we've looked at. We've got this self-care checklist over here. It's right at the top. It's nice and clear as the first thing that you should be doing. And throughout the site, there are different resources that you can sign up for. Self-care toolkit, capsule wardrobe guide. So that's great. If we look at the placement 
of the um, of this lead magnet. I'm just trying to find it. Home page, yes, it's on the home page. Um, is it in the posts? Yes, I'm just going to pull those up. So this is where we want them to be actually within the blog post. It's in the sidebar. And as you scroll through, it is mentioned somewhere in here, it was linking to it, I think. I don't see it now. Okay, I don't see on this one. One of the posts I looked at earlier, it was actually linked to the, to the lead magnet within the post. Here I'm seeing a lot of ads, which I'm guessing Allison's making more money from at the moment. Um, if Down you... at the bottom is... Yeah, keep going. Uh, so we've got here in the footer part and just above it here as well. That could be mentioned at the top and then in the middle as well. Um, and if Alison gets this all working, I think she'll make a lot more money from having this promoted heavily instead of the, instead of the ads at some point. So how would somebody do this without cannibalizing their existing revenue stream display ads? Do you, do you suggest that they replace that altogether or is there a way to have both yes. coexist? Yeah, you kind of phase it out gradually. So you start off by doing something like Alison's got here where you mention it as well as having the ads on the page. And then over time, as you start to see that you've got um, your email promotions are working and your checkout page is effective and all these kind of things, you start to get a sense of, oh, if I just had a bigger email list, I'd actually make a lot more money. And then you start to, if we look at the top here, you'll see, first thing you see is the, is the lead magnet. And then you see the ad, and as you keep scrolling, the ad is what stays there, and the lead magnet doesn't. And so you'd swap that round. You know, maybe you you move the ad down to be lower priority, and the lead magnet to be higher priority, and then eventually you get rid of them, as you see. And it's like I've got a friend who was doing this for over the course of probably three years as she transitioned. She had all ads, and then she transitioned to being all, um, you know, no ads at all, and all just lead magnets. Got it. And do you think there should be a, a pop-up page when they try to leave? It's a question from the audience. Uh, yeah, so those are good as well. So we definitely recommend a pop-up when someone's been on the site for a certain period of time, like 30 seconds. Um, exit intent pop-ups um, do add another kind of, I forget exactly, but something like another 0.2, 0.3% opt-in overall site-wide, something like that. So it's worth having. Um, it's not the top one. It's I don't go out of my way to recommend it. Got it. So then if we look at the sales pages for Alison's site, we can get rid of this whole navigation bar for the sales page. That's going to move everything up to here. We can make a lot better use of this. We can move this over to the side, move the headline up to the top, and then have down the other side have the actual text. So... Um, the two-sided layout converts. We've run a lot of tests on this. That converts better than having everything just down one um, one lot of text down the middle. Uh, at the top, you can have these two. Let me show you that Lucy's one again. Uh, Lucy actually chimed in on the chat. Did she? Very, very honored to have our page featured. <laughs> Lucy's amazing. She's so cool. Um, here you go. There's like two, you know, you have the pictures on the left and then the text on the right, this kind of thing. Um, so if we go back here, yeah, so this we can move, we can move over to the side and might even be better to have it, or it would be better to have a video as well. This is pretty good as a headline. It's not actually bad at all. I'm quite, quite impressed here. Um, the bullet points is good. The formatting on this one seems to be slightly off. A compelling sub headline would be great here. I think a good sub headline for Alison would be transform your life, boost your energy and improve your overall well-being with our easy to follow guide tailored to fit into your busy schedule. It's quite long, but that's all right with subheading, subheadlines that could be longer. Um, call to action, change from join here to, um, well, actually first thing is she's got two different ones. One's enroll here, one's join here. So we want that to be the same everywhere, but then probably that could be changed to something that's more in the first person and, and saying to somebody, yes, uh, um, I want to I want to master self care now, um, something kind of like that. Problem agitation solutions section. Um, we have got that I think, which is here. Yes, and 
that is that could be spelled out a little bit more. They could just make that a little bit longer and really spell out for people what is the emotional issue that's that's caused here. We've got kind of problem and solution, but we don't have problem agitation solution here. Meet the instructor is missing. This is the section where testimonials are meant to go. And some reason they're not here. I'm not sure what's happened. I think something's kind of broken there. Um, we do have the offer in more detail, which is great, including this course overview here. This section's quite good. I thought it was just going to expand, but it doesn't seem to be doing. So that might be there might be something wrong with that one. But this is this is pretty good in terms of what's in the course. Bonuses, there aren't any bonuses. That would be really good. In fact, there maybe are, because I see a section that says bonuses, but I can't read that one. Um, Guarantee, I think they've got, which is good. Guarantee. I'm not seeing it. In, oh, here we go. Nice big badge that shows guarantee. Let's show Lucy's one again. Um, guarantee. Here we go. Nice big badge like that. Make it really clear. FAQ, they've got down here at the bottom, which is excellent. But again, for me, these aren't expanding. I don't know if it's if this would work if I was in Chrome instead of Safari, but I'm in Safari on a Mac and that's not working. And so that's the sales page. And then the checkout page, let's have a look. Uh, this seems to be done, it's a two-step checkout. There are benefits of two-step checkout. You can do abandoned cart emails if you have two-step checkout. We've actually found overall for most people it converts better if they have just one step. Um, rather than two. Now, one question here is, uh, oh, to maybe rearrange the question is, why are you not checking the mobile version? Do you so? The question yeah. is, why are you not checking the mobile version of the websites? Do more users check mobile? Yeah. So for a lot of people, it is better to have mobile, and you're absolutely right. I I uh, should be looking at that. My team, my team would normally do that for stuff for us so if you look here on this is a, i'm assuming it's responsive design which it seems to be changing the structure as i'm moving this so this isn't mobile size but it's closer um then we can kind of see how it looks there but yes you're, they're absolutely right you should be checking this on mobile as well 100 percent. if we go back and look at the sales page on mobile version then you'll see it's a long way before you get to the uh, call to action. Yeah, it seems like it's actually, this might have been designed more for mobile, just when I look at it that way. Well, I, I actually, I'm, I could be wrong, but it looks like... As if my phone's around. Yeah. The functionality uh, looks better. Looks better, yeah, on mobile. Um, okay, well, that's good to know. That's definitely helpful. Yeah, so it depends who you are, right? So for, for me, because I sell B2B, most of our clients are on desktop, but for most of these people, probably most yep. of our clients could be on mobile. Yeah. That's um, a good point to just con consider if you're B2B, B2C, what, who your audience is and what, if they predominantly. Yeah, it's easy to look up on six. That's just a section that shows you what devices most people are on and that's what you know. Right, you're right. In terms of the order page, um, we have got a nice simple page here but we're missing all the steps that we showed before. So there's no testimonials. There are the trust badges down here. Uh, there's no reminder of guarantee. There's no reminder of features and benefits. There's navigation, which we shouldn't have on a checkout page. Um, and there's no pic, oh, there is a picture of the something for the product. Um, so that one's, that one's good. And there's no order bump. So again, a lot of the same things. And you'll see this across like, you know, we do this day in, day out. Like what we do these, um, paid audits for clients when they first start working with us. And we go through everything in detail and we, we typically see a lot of the same stuff that comes up with nearly everybody. Got it. Okay. Well, I know I want to be respectful of your time, John. Speaking of audits, taking clients through, if anybody watching this thinks that they would be a good fit for working with you, uh, how, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? Yeah. Uh, so the first thing that everyone should do, whether they are thinking of working with us or not, is go to pimpyourfunnel.com. There's a short form. It's like 10 or 12 questions. It takes a few minutes to fill in. 
And what we'll do is put together a free personalized report for you saying for you, right, these are the steps you're missing. This is how much more money you could make. Here's some tips on how to actually go and implement it. So for anybody who is a, has got a course business already, even if they're smaller, they can fill it in and get something useful from it. If you are, if you think you actually might be a good fit, you're interested in working with us, what's going to happen is when you fill that in, you're going to get sent a link to um, our Calendly to be able to book a 15 minute call where we'll double check if you're a good fit to work with us or not. And if you are, then you'll be able to book a call with me to kind of have a chat about it. Um, if you're a good, if you've got a bigger site, what we'll also do as a, as a bonus is we'll add a, we'll do a free video funnel review. So like today's ones for those, but actually more detailed and just for your site, we'll go through and do that. And that's for everybody who um, we think would be a good fit to work with us, whether they work with us or not, they get that from Martina. Peter says, survey results were very insightful. Nice. Good to hear. So yeah, just a reminder, the link for that is pimpyourfunnel.com, which is cool. my favorite website address I've ever bought. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll leave a link to that in the, the video description as well for anybody who Thanks, might misspell that. Uh, all right, let's see. Any questions? Looks like we might not have any additional questions from the audience but if anybody does have questions uh, you can even ask afterwards and i'll be sure to respond to them maybe i'll re have to reach out to john for those uh okay well that took us right up to okay actually we have one from austin after the free funnel review what is the next step oh so we do the funnel review and then if someone's a good fit to work with us we offer them the uh a call um, it's a 15 minute call where we will talk to them about, um, uh, just checking their numbers, checking where they're at. If they're a good fit to, if they look to be a good fit to work with us, then that would, uh, that call is done by someone in my team. Then they get to book a call with me and Dunya and we'll go through and actually talk to them in detail about their plans, their goals for the business, where they're at the moment, what the issues are, and be sure that like culturally they're a good fit, that we get on well. Um, and if at that point then we would make them an offer. If we think they're a good fit, we'd make them an offer of an, a paid audit where we'll go through and do like a really detailed breakdown of their site. And then at the end of the audit, if someone wants to work with us, we have a group coaching program. And the group coaching program is there's no upfront fee for it at all. We charge people a percentage of the increase in revenue they make. So oh, nice. if it makes more money, they pay us a small percentage of that. If they don't make more money, which it doesn't happen, but just as reassurance, then um, then they just don't pay anything to be included in until they start to, to increase their revenue. And uh, so that is our, that's our group coaching program. That's the main thing that we do with people. Oh, that's awesome. And it looks like South Tech Creations might have been one of the, might have been Allison's notebook, potentially. Okay. So, so they say thank you for looking at Oh, that. you're very welcome. No problem at all. I hope that's useful. Yeah, and if you want a more detailed breakdown from Martina and my team, then uh, fill in that, fill in that pimpyourfunnel.com and she'll do the video review for you and, and send over. Cool. So yeah, everybody that is pimpyourfunnel.com. And if you have any questions, uh, I, I did see, John, you said to reach out to you at John at Data Driven Marketing, but probably best for them to just uh, reach out through the pimpyourfunnel.com website. Yeah, it just just email me. I mean, email me if you want to get hold of that uh, 15 crucial elements of a sales page, and I'll get someone from my team to email you back with it. Yes. Um, questions I'm probably not going to. I'll answer in the, the comments for the video. If, Nick, if you reach out back out to me, I'll do that where it's cool. public. Um, I won't do individual uh, responses. Yep. Cool. Yeah. So anybody, any, anybody with questions, just leave them on the, the, YouTube, uh, the YouTube chat. Cool. Well, I think that is the right place to wrap up. So John, hey. thanks so much for your time, man. I'm glad we were thanks. able to do part two. Thanks everybody watching. Really appreciate your time taking part and uh, chat to you later. Thanks everybody.